They dragged Atnarn up the few steps and dropped him in the middle of a Burmese hut. He looked up and saw the long bamboo pole that went the length of the entire hut. He groaned. It's just another prison. Atnarm Judson had been in prison for almost a year. It started when Great Britain declared war on Burma. The Burmese king condemned all foreigners as spies. So Atnarm and the other missionaries had been pulled in, condemned, and taken to the death prison. There they were thrown down into a hole with the worst of the Burmese society. That's when he was introduced to the, the long bamboo pole. They put leg irons on each man, riveted them on, and then at night they attached him to the pole and pulled it up about four feet. They slept the night with their heads down on the ground, their feet up about four feet. It was dark during the daytime because there were no windows. But they were allowed 10 minutes to go outside to sunlight. Then they had to go back down into their dungeon with the smell of human waste and rotting flesh. The Burmese didn't waste food on condemned prisoners. But Anne, Adnarn's wife, could come every other day and bring a little bit of food. Uh, he couldn't actually get to see her, but he could hear her voice. This was encouraging to him because at least then he knew that she wasn't in another dungeon somewhere. Oh, she could not have survived that, especially now that she was expecting their child. One day he said to her, what about my New Testament? Did they destroy it? Do you still have it? Adnarm had worked nine years in organizing the Burmese language and then translating the New Testament into Burmese. No, no, I hid it. I buried it in the ground, but it won't last long. It will rot there. What should I do? Find a pillow, a, an ugly, dirty pillow. Take the pages of the New Testament and sew them inside. Make sure that it's an ugly pillow so the guards won't steal them from me. And then bring it to me. Soon he had his prized pillow. He spent 11 months in that dungeon going through all the horrors. After that time, they drew the missionaries out and took off their leg irons. Then they marched them out of the death prison. As he did, a guard reached over and grabbed the pillow away from him and threw it onto a trash heap to be burnt later. There was his life's work and his reason to live. They were to march eight miles, but their feet were in such bad shape that they couldn't do it. After four miles, they all just collapsed and couldn't move any farther. They knew this meant execution. At that point, they didn't care. As they waited for the sword to fall, Suddenly, an ox cart was brought up, and their limp bodies were piled on the back of the cart. They were taken on the other four miles. In the bamboo hut, they once again put leg irons on them. And that night, they attached it onto the pole and lifted it up. But that arm didn't even care. Eventually, he just lost consciousness. 
during the night, he had a dream. He dreamed his wife was leaning over him and she had their baby girl. And then they just disappeared. In the morning, he found out that he wasn't dreaming. There was his wife and she had brought food for all of them. And then she introduced him to their baby girl, Maria. His wife came every day with more food. Matter of fact, oh, one of the Burmese Christians was a chef and he brought plenty of food for all of them. Others came with, with medical supplies and nursed them back to health. He eventually found out that Burma had lost the war to Britain and the, the king didn't want these missionaries to die. Uh, no, they were the only ones that could translate the, the treaties between the, between the two nations. In time, Atanar and his wife Anne and little, little Maria were allowed to go home. Their missionary house was in total shambles. Ah, oh, but that could be rebuilt. His life's work was gone. In a few days, they received a visit from one of the Burmese Christians. She, like the others, thought that the men brought out of the death prison were going to be executed. So she rushed in to see if she could find some little thing that would remind her of the great man who brought them the gospel. That's when she saw the ugly pillow. She quickly grabbed it and snuck it on out and took it home. She was about to wash it when she realized there was something on the inside. She opened it up and to her amazement, she found the Burmese New Testament. Oh, she treasured it with her life. At Naram and Anne stood there listening to this Burmese Christian tell this story. Finally, the lady said, And here, I have brought it today to give back to you. Atnaram took that New Testament. He then worked to finish the rest of the Bible. And to this day, the Christians in Burma honor the great man, the missionary who first brought them the gospel. And to this day, they still use Atnarm's Justin's translation of the Bible.